wicked, wicked, wicked. Wicked tones, you know what I'm saying? Apparently there's a video going around. I don't want people to like get misled, you know? But there's a video going around of supposedly me using a tripod to film my workout, which is like, if anyone knows, that's ridiculous, right? Cody, have you seen Mike anywhere? I think he's over there. Over there? Okay. Fuck? What the fuck is this? Don't believe the the nonsense you hear on the internet, you know? Today we're gonna do uh let me do a set first so I don't get distracted. There's like a point to make about when people do back. I have a lot of people I train, a lot of people I see training online. There's a lot of good back training. There's a lot of bad back training, which we've talked about, but it's just, I think a lot of people get hung up on the idea that they have to contract their back in the same fashion that they contract like a bicep or they contract their chest or whatever it might be like a quad, whatever, something you can really flex down on. Like I'm aware when I'm flexing my quad, I know my quad is super flexed. I know when my chest is like completely locked out and cinched and flexed in, right? Whereas back, you don't really get that feeling without like super retracted shoulders and like elevated sternum and like rocking here. So I only get this really big sensation of flex back when I'm in this like hyper flexed pinched position. That's my like, that's my bicep peak, let's say, right? So that being said, all this range in here is about opening and relaxing and getting muscles to move. And it's like once weight gets heavy enough or angles get awkward, the contraction isn't going to be maximal. You're not going to be able to like, like on that prime row, I'm like, yeah, maybe at that weight it could, but if I go any heavier, I can't get to here and go oh, and hold this contraction. Cause right when I'm getting to about three quarters to like, let's say 85% of the way up, I'm feeling this resistance wanting to take me back down. So the idea isn't to fight that resistance and pull more, which I'm kind of getting into with people when they duck into things. It's like find that maximal tension point or resistance point, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. There's a, probably a way fancier term for that. Someone else can correct me. Like peak resistance curve, let's say. So I'm going to hold here. I'm going to find that where that tension starts to feel like I'm forcing it to go further. I'm going to find that point. And I'm going to rock out of it. So it's this elastic feeling of like elastic being let out and let back in. It's not this like, I go here and I snap it back and I snap it back and I let it go, right? So it's like a big thing for people to find when they're doing back is, is these tension points or these maximal, maximal, maximum contraction points for that given lift. It's gonna be different for everything. My maximum contraction point here, it's not gonna be the same as it was in that row, right? I think a lot of people get mistaken, especially when they do pull downs. This is just imitating a cable pull down, but it's a way better angle. We've done it before. So it's like, if I'm, if this is my set position where I'm locked into my low lat and I'm kind of engaged in my mid back and I rock down right about here is my contraction point, not here. So I'm not trying to pull. I want to, I want to find that tension. So I already feel that tension dropping into me. I'm fighting that resistance. I'm locking down. I'm letting that resistance take me back up. I'm not trying to like snap things down and just pull things, pull things. It's like, no, I'm trying to find that sinking resistance and I'm rocking down into the, into the contraction. So I'm just moving with the resistance of the machine, right? I get talked to by a lot of, as much shit as talked online and whatever, like, a lot of good people have reached out to me online and a lot of really interesting people have told me like how much they, they fuck with what I'm talking about. They enjoy the content. They're being told stuff that they wish they had found out years ago. And there's like an overarching consensus among a lot of people that comment on my stuff or write me privately. I actually spoke to a guy last night, basically like 
He's like, I'm, I spent so much money on trainers and I've like, and watching your videos, I've learned more in those videos and I've kind of empowered myself to, by watching the videos and kind of watching what you do and then learning myself, like using what you're teaching and going in the gym, right? That's just kind of like the goal of all this, like all the shit talking, all the whatever aside, it's like, this is about helping people, right? So it's just not about helping certain people. Maybe it's about helping certain people snap out of their stupidity but that's going to take longer than helping someone who wants to get better, right? You may not like what I have to say, but it needs to be said a lot of the time. So yeah, getting back to the, the training, just like and I've, I have clients of mine or people I've trained even in the past or have been with like, like, oh, I just came to you. I was with a trainer for the last four years and I've never learned any of this. I've never been taught any of this. I've never experienced this. Like my workouts aren't this hard or you know what I mean? I'm not sore or whatever it is. It's like, yeah, well, that's because like we've talked about in other videos, there's no accountability to trainers. Like apparently if you work out and you go to the gym, you're, you're qualified to be a trainer as well. Even though your ass is still fucking learning how to work out and like constantly fucking trying to like do new things and find new ways to reinvent the wheel. Yet you're somehow qualified enough to teach people. Like I have a style I adhere to. A lot of other great trainers out there have a style they adhere to and that's their style and they should do that. And I'm not gonna, if it came down to like having a debate about it, yeah, we could talk about it, but I would see where they're coming from and they would probably understand where I'm coming from. We'd probably have a lot of crossover effect just because they don't do things the same doesn't mean you don't see the sport the same or movement or muscle. There's just different ways to do stuff, right? But this over this like reoccurring theme of like shit trainers is prevalent in every in every like society or every group of bodybuilding or lifting or like fitness whatever you want to call this this world we're in right so if you're just a housewife or you're just a dude who like got out of shape wants to get himself back in shape and get back to his old self or a little looking a little better it's like you're going to these trainers at these box gyms or wherever it could be any anywhere honestly because they're fucking dime a dozen and you're getting with this person and like there's like really big red flags to show you, you have a fucking shit trainer. Like they should be popping up like crazy. Like, yeah, give the person a chance. You, if you don't know any better, like obviously there's not Google reviews on like individual trainers and not everybody has a YouTube channel to promote information such as myself and other people who were lucky to be able to do so. But like, you're gonna know within a very short time frame whether this is working or not. So there's like key indicators, right? Like if right off the bat, when you meet a trainer, like your number one red flag, if they start promising you results or go, or you're going to attain this or this or this within like a ridiculously short amount of time, they're lying to you. They're just trying to get you on the hook. And the only time that they're not lying to you and they could be telling the truth or it could be possible is if you're enhanced. So if you're on juice, you're, fairly experienced in lifting, you have a background, you have some muscle on you, you get with a new trainer, he, he or she tells you, oh, we can, let's put on, I think we could get your body fat down X percent. I think we could put on a few pounds of solid muscle in the next like four to six, three to six months, right? Let's say yeah. I could buy that to a degree, but if you're a natural person who's never lifted before, oh. is just like a sedentary person who like is just lifting to feel better, get better these like unattainable results like oh we're gonna like you come to my want to lose 30 pounds and i'm trying to lose 30 pounds in three months well good luck like you could don't get me wrong it's entirely possible you will not feel well and you will fucking feel like shit and it'll be like starvation mode and you're not gonna like life and it's not healthy for you right so if they st if they right off the bat start telling you oh this is, we're gonna no problem like i've never met you before Laura comes to me, says, I want to train. She's, I've never met her. I don't have any, any gauge of what she can do or can't do, has done. And I'm like, yeah, we could definitely, we could definitely put 10 pounds of muscle on you in the next four months. It's like, and if you're believing that, like, it's not really a knock on you because you don't understand. You're coming from a place of ignorance. It's like me when I take my car to the mechanic. It tells me something's wrong. I'm like, sure, I guess it is. No fucking clue, right? I don't know what a goddamn carburetor is or what it does. I'm just not into that shit, right? But I trust the mechanic to tell me what's up and be a stand-up guy. That same guy, if I take my car to a mechanic and I'm an ignorant person when it comes to cars, like, 
when I leave the shop, after Buddy says he fixed my whatever, fucking valve or whatever, and my car is still rattling, it's like, well, I guess he didn't do it, right? But he still took my 200 bucks or my fucking 500 bucks or whatever it is for the part. That's the same thing with trainers, right? You gotta be weary of, oh shit, people promising crazy shit in short amounts of time or unrealistic goals that are attainable. Like, if someone came to me and said that to me, I wanna lose this and this and this, I'd be like, well, um, one, you training with me once or twice a week is not gonna make that happen. It's everything you're doing outside of the gym that's gonna make that happen, if it's even attainable. Are, is your diet right? Is your rest right? Are you supplementing well? Are you doing what it takes to recover properly? Like, these are all things that are on you as a client, right? So those are variables the trainer can't account for. So if they're accounting for it, thinking that they, and convincing you that they are the, they are the fucking savior of your life and well, I'm gonna, we're gonna do this and just you show up, blah, 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 keep forking out your money. And then the three months hits or four months hits, you're obviously nowhere near that. And even if you are by some miracle, you have to still work to keep that progress. You don't just drop your miraculous 30 pounds and then for the rest of your life it's off all everything's hunky-dory you don't need a trainer anymore it's a continuous journey so get people when you get the trainer make sure they're not selling you pipe dreams right they're being honest with you like you hear this type of thing from a trainer when you first meet them be like okay well let's focus on i know you have these big goals you want to get to here we're here now Let's start like taking baby steps. Like let's get eating better. Let's get you doing a little bit of cardio that you haven't been doing. Let's get you lifting a little more intensely. And all these little baby steps and little things you're doing to like make those differences are gonna eventually lead to here. But you're gonna be so unimpressed. You're gonna be so like, when, you, when you're thinking this is the end goal and doing all those things that you're supposed to be doing, the end goal is just gonna become a journey that you're gonna continue on. There's no end point. It's just like, I like to live this way now. I enjoy being healthy. I enjoy putting good things in my body. I enjoy working out hard. I like the feeling I get from training hard, right? So that's a trainer. If you're meeting a trainer for the first time or you're looking into one, that's the type of stuff you should be hearing from them. They shouldn't just be like, it's not you walking in with no experience and telling them how to do their job. If, you, if I'm able to tell, if someone's able to walk up to me and tell me, this is what we're doing, we're gonna do this and this and this, I'm not much of a trainer. I'm just patting you on the ass. Yeah. Good job, man. Yeah, we for sure we can do that. And you, know, you turn your back, I'm like, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, people are selling pipe dreams and people are buying them. And then we fast forward, you've been with the same trainer for three years. You look like a bag of fucking, a bag of mayonnaise. Yeah. And just like, what? well, I train with the trainer three days a week. <laughs> you could fucking fool me. Cause you don't look like you do. Like there should be a noticeable improvement, and especially if someone's training that frequently. If someone's training three, four, three, four times a week with a trainer, oh. there should be a noticeable improvement in body composition. Like even on the even on the client's part, they should be coming in. You as the person getting trained should be like, man, this shirt like I didn't fit this shirt fit kind of tight before. Now it feels like it's like sitting better on me. I can get back in those those jeans I used to wear. Or if you're going the opposite way, nothing fits me. I'm getting too damn big. My muscles, like my legs are twice the fucking size. I gotta get bigger pants. It depends on your goal, but there should be visual and like tactile changes of like seeing what like I feel different. Like this looks different on me. I visually see these lines or these like kind of crevices that are coming from me putting on muscle and getting a little leaner, right? So that's just probably the first one. Went on a while on that one, but. So another red flag, more so, well, it's for even experienced people who are coming to train with someone who's training them and teaching them how to move differently, whether it be me or any other coach out there that has a different style of movement or sees things differently. It's like if your trainer isn't correcting your form constantly, or at least like cueing you to remember certain aspects of what you're doing, because when things get tough and you get tired in the set, form starts falling apart a lot of the time, especially for inexperienced people. For experienced guys, usually the form gets better as you get tired, as the focus comes in and you start to understand, I really gotta figure out what's going on here, right? So since I'm saying if people see me training clients, they see me training people in the gym, different HD videos, things like that, 
I'm constantly prodding people. I'm touching them because I can't say with words. I can say with words what I want you to do, but to be in the middle of something and hearing like, pull your shoulders back. It's like, I'm just concerned about this weight in my hand. I just, I think I am pulling my shoulders back. It's like, no, I need to show you, like pull these fucking things back. Like move them back, lift your chest up, whatever it might be, right? Bury your head, put your chin down. That's why you see me tapping people. See me moving people's heads. It's not because I want to just like fuck with them. It's like, I want to, I'm telling you, I need your head here and your head's here. And I'm telling you to put it back and you don't understand that it can go back. And then I do this and you're like, oh, oh, okay. Like, because they can't do it in the movement. It's too, there's too much going on, right? And if you can't set, and you, it's hard to set people in, in like the pre-movement. Like, so if I'm going to, oh, now we're going to pick up this weight. I'm going to set myself where I want to be. That's great. But then once you start moving, it's, oh. Or up. And it's like you're out of what you're supposed to be doing. So it's like, let's get you moving, setting you in the right spots. And then as you're moving, it's like you see me, I tell people to like push their head back against my hand. So they're doing a pull and instead of letting their head hang, they're pushing their head back against my hand to keep their spine erect, to keep their back engaged. It's a weird situation because you're not necessarily a bad trainer because you don't do that, but you might not be the best trainer or is experienced to even to recognize that you should be. So you're not, you don't have the wherewithal or the experience or the vision or like to see what's going on. So it just like, yeah, they're pulling it. Just like you probably do that. And if you're teaching someone in your vision, cool. But like even, even your vision that might be off, like we said before, you might have a skewed, a skewed way of doing something. It's still, if you sat down and did it and then your client sat down and did it, they're two different images. So at least get them doing perfectly what it is that you do. Not to say that everyone should move like me, everyone should move like John Meadows, everyone should move like Hypertrophy Coach, or everyone should move like, you know, whoever that you follow. But like, it, you should have a vision of how you want that person to move based on how you move, and they should be a mirror image of you. It shouldn't be completely different. So if I sit down and do this, do this prime row, my client should be able to sit down and mimic what it is that I do on this prime row because I am the one teaching them how to do it. I'm not teaching you in some random fucking, well, like I do it this way, but let's just have you do it this way. It's like, no, like how are they, how are they ever gonna connect? How are you ever gonna see if they're moving well if they're not doing what you do and what you're teaching them, right? So you're, there, there's gonna be issues with people doing your movement properly because no two people are the same, right? So, and no, no few people are gonna be identical in movement because everyone's gonna have different structures and different things like that. But, the idea of like first mover, the first thing that sho the first thing that grabs, the first thing that happens with your chest, your shoulders, whatever it might be, head back, that should all be a sequence that's visible by the person watching. So if I had two people doing it, the trainer and the client doing it side by side, I'd be like, yeah, I know that Joe trains with Steve. I can see they move the same, right? It's like if you see people that I train, training on their own, you can see my movement carrying through those people. And you can be like, that's the way Mike moves. Mike, he learned from Mike. And like, you'll see people, I've seen people in videos, they're unaware that I've seen them in videos. Talking about how they've seen people move in my style of movement, their opinion of it is their opinion of it, but you see that they're moving in my style of movement. So obviously what I taught them crossed over. Your opinion of whether it's right or wrong, good or bad, is no bearing to me but you can see that my style and my teaching has carried over to someone else. And they're doing that moving exactly the way I showed them to do it, the way that I do it, whether you disagree or don't disagree.